Private Detective Choshiro Kirishima wakes up in front of Haibara Infirmary. Where am I? Why am I here? Choshiro remembers coming to the island at the request of Ruka's mother, Sayaka. Choshiro was the one who found the five missing girls on Rogetsu Isle ten years ago when he still worked for the police. <sighs> Sorry, I like choked on my water. Standing in front of the infirmary, Chochiro sees Yo Haibara, a suspect he had been chasing in connection with the multiple missing persons case that took place on the island. Yo is the son of Shigeto Haibara, head of the island and director of Haibara Infirmary. Chochiro is certain that Yo had to do with the girls' disappearances as they were found underneath Haibara Infirmary. Yo evaded capture and the case was closed, but Chochiro would not give up. He handed in his badge and became a private detective to continue his search for Yo Haibara, who is here now at the infirmary. Could Ruka be here too? With his instincts telling him that the disappearances, Yo and Haibara Infirmary are all related, Choshiro stands before the place where he found five frightened girls all those years ago. Phase 7 Tranquility Interesting. Ruka's not here. Looks like my hunch was wrong. All right. Ben says, not a horror game, but one of my favorite PS2 games was Max Payne. The game definitely had horror sequences in the Nightmare sections. Yeah, Max Payne's cool. Uh, um, all Remedy games are cool. Alan Wake, I'm not, I don't think Alan Wake's like a perfect game, but I really like it. I love Control. I think Control is an almost perfect Metroidvania. Uh, that game is incredible. Um, and definitely one of the best horror games of the past, you know, 10 years. Uh, Hexo says, Escape from Book Butcher Bay was very horror adjacent. Yeah. Well, I mean, Riddick, uh, Pitch Black was like, was a sci-fi horror film in the same way that people defend, you know, Aliens as like a sci-fi horror film. Uh it has a lot of action, but it's still it's still rooted in these horrifying concepts. Uh, we I'm trying to think what else. Um, oh yeah, and like I would be remiss to not mention, you know, games like Pathologic that came out. Pathologic originally came out in two thousand five, I believe, or if not two thousand five, two thousand six. Like that's just incredible. Like one of the best horror games ever made. Uh, same with Patholo or not Pathologic, The Void. The Void came out in 2008, I think. And that's just one of the most incredible, profound horror games. So I don't remember seeing this door. It's pretty old, though. Why didn't I notice it when I found Ruka here? I don't know, man, because you were fixated on trying to get kids out of here. Ben says, do I remember the scream from the nightmare section? Uh, not specifically, but I do remember the nightmare section being pretty terrifying. Oh, uh, another PS2 era horror game that I've heard is pretty good is, um, what's it called? Alone in the Dark 4, people liked, I think. And then I know that people have like a soft spot for a lot of the weird Dreamcast horror games like Ill Bleed, which I never played. This looks like a note written by someone who died here. I don't want to die in a place like this. I've heard the stories. The day of tranquility is here. They say back then some people came down to this place and they were spared, but not this time. Who did this? The right of descent, she. She's here, that woman is here. I saw her blossomed face, her warped, smashed, twisted, destroyed face. Exit the Rogetsu Primeval Passage. I gotta get out of this this tiny hallway and get more open space. Just chain chain attack him the whole time. It's been a really long time since I, I played Max Payne. I played Max Payne 1 uh, back when it first came out. I don't think I ever beat Max Payne 2, um, but I did, I think I probably rented it. I'm trying to think of other vaguely horror themed stuff from the time, but 
My brain is just full of holes at this point. I don't know. Was Dead to Rights a horror game? I never, never finished that. I remember that game had a dog that you could make bite people. <laughs> but I don't remember if it was horror themed at all. For all I know, you're like playing as a cop or something. This tape, did I record this? Oh, young Ruka's voice, young Ruka's... Oh, no, we already had that. All right. Uh, let's listen to these. I don't know if we had them before. この島出身の者にとって特別な意味を持つ祭りだという情報にかけてみる。灰原がこの島に渡ったという証言はまだ取れず、本部は動かない。東京での捜索を進めている。しかし灰原はこの島にいるような気がする。これは俺の勘だが
Oh, people really like Cold Fear. I forgot about Cold Fear. Alright. Something is making noise on my computer. And I can't tell what it is. And it's very loud. What is happening? Gotcha. That's what it was. Steam. I just accidentally clicked on a Steam video while I was <laughs> while I was minimized, uh, and it started playing noise, and I was super confused. Sorry about that. Um, okay. Let's see. Play Fragile Dreams. Uh, I could definitely play Fla Fragile GM Dreams. That's a, that's a weird, interesting game. I had a friend who loved that game. So the director's office connects here. He was involved in the disappearances after all. And that's the elevator. Oh no, not easily defeatable ghosts. Is Breakdown a horror game? Isn't that a... That's like that Xbox 360 weird M-Sim... Not 360, Xbox original M-Sim that Grimbeard covered, right? I never played that, but it seemed dope in that video. I was very intrigued. Ben says one of the more, more scary titles I've played is a game called Red Mist. I've never heard of that, but could be cool. Oh shit, and I shouldn't forget, of course, the the great great granddaddy of internet horror games. Fucking Yume Nikki came out in 2004. Yume Nikki is incredible. Like, truly one of the best horror games ever made. One of the most influential indie games ever made as well. So yeah, Yume Nikki rules. Uh, that's a great one. So like the you know the the death of horror in that that console generation is slightly exaggerated from a historical standpoint, but at the same time, it was kind of uh, hard to it's kind of hard to remember things that aren't just the classics because the classics are the things we we truly do remember uh, because they're so influential. Ben says, "What was that thing in Yume Nikki? Uboa? Uh, Uboa is a thing in Yume Nikki. He is not the only thing." Yume Nikki is full of crazy horror stuff. That whole game's a nightmare. Quite literally. And of course, we can't, uh, we can't ignore some of the incredibly impressive Yume Nikki, uh, influenced games and, like, fan games that people made in RPG Maker. Stuff like Dot Flow, LCD DEM, Lucid Dream, um... What else did we have? You you may Nikki as in Tuki. Uh, that was that was a good one. Uh, still in development. People are still releasing stuff for it. Uh, ben says, "Did I say something?" Yes, uh, I said Uboa is a thing in You May Nikki. Not not everything. Uh, he is one of the many scary things in that game. But yeah, Yume Nikki, great. And then, of course, all the fan games. Dot Flow probably being my favorite. But, I mean, even stuff as, as modern as, like, Undertale and Strange Telephone and Space Funeral are, are pretty heavily influenced by Yume Nikki. Same with stuff like Off, Mortis Ghosts, Off, um, Hylix, uh, Eeb. Eeb was another one that was probably would not exist if not for Yume Nikki. Alright, just gotta run so that they don't instant kill me.
All right, so we took care of those tedious ghosts. Door is being held shut by a powerful force. That doesn't mean I take a picture of it, does it? Does not. Okay. Just gotta go up the elevator. Is Half Life horror? I don't think so. It does have a lot of horror elements, though. Um, I would say out of, I mean, when you think about its concepts, definitely it's a sci-fi horror game. Um, I think f probably you could make the argument that the first Half Life is a horror game. Yeah, yeah, I think that I think you could qualify that. I think you could qualify Half Life as a horror game. Half Life Two probably a little bit less so, uh, though it does have some really great horror moments. Half Life Alex leans very very heavily into into some of the horror stuff as well, especially the cosmic horror angle of uh, Half Life. All right. Oh shoot, we can we can go in these doors when uh, Ruka couldn't. Shine our flashlight on stuff. Cloth appears over a human ho corpse. One of the masks found everywhere in this building has been placed on it. Well, if it's found everywhere, it makes sense that it would be found here. Did I reveal? I did. Might have something to do with this corpse. Oh, I think definitely Bloodborne is a horror game. I think most of the Souls games are horror games. They are very heavily inspired by by horror media. I mean, even just thinking about the like the novels that really influenced them, stuff like Book of the New Sun is like classic horror sci-fi. Uh, Drifting Classroom, like Kazuo Umez stuff, um, heavily inspired a lot of the things in Bloodborne as well. Um, Dark Souls, you know, Berserk being a primarily horror, cosmic horror manga, definitely influenced them all. Though to, a, to while the, the horror influence in Berserk is a pretty huge one on the whole Souls series, people overstate it and, and don't realize how much other stuff also has influenced it. So, yeah, I think, I think that there's a lot, uh, a lot of, of interesting horror in Bloodborne. Um, Bloodborne is almost entirely inspired by H.P. Lovecraft. Not entirely. He's, it's inspired by things that were inspired by Lovecraft. Uh, a surprising amount of Bloodborne comes, especially the references and influences and the way the mythos is set up, is stuff that came after Lovecraft. So even the idea of this, this cadre of elder gods that work in concert and against each other, that stuff doesn't actually come directly from Lovecraft. That comes from after Lovecraft, uh, when August Durleth was, was collecting his works. And of course, works, you know, fan sci fantasy from like the 80s, 70s and 80s, like Book of the New Sun, and even Ursula K. Le Guin stuff has a really heavy influence on both souls and Bloodborne. What are my thoughts on Junji Ito? I love Junji Ito. What, what's there to say? <laughs> Postmortem report. Tomoko Hinuma. Hinuma Tomoko, female. Cause of death, drowning. Found floating in Rogat's Hall pool by a nurse. She was already dead from cardiopulmonary arrest at time of discovery. Additional notes. Deceased reported to have entered a state of agitation at the same time Tsubaki Tono collapsed on the night of the Kagura and developed moonlight syndrome thereafter. Note left at the scene indicates suicide. Typical case of someone losing themselves at the Kagura and not coming back. Signs of budding harvest face. Hexo says those games are scary. My heart's racing in every new area in them. Yeah, me too. I have no idea where that ghost was, so I just missed it forever. I was kind of looking at chat. Oh, <laughs> Apollo says, Sherlock the Lovecraft in Adventure will surely be horror. Uh, yeah, so I just installed Sherlock the Awakening. It came out today. So we'll play that. <laughs> That's going to happen. It'll probably be the next game we play. Serious errors have been found in records concerning sudden deaths of patients. As such, the specified reports are to be destroyed immediately using the incinerator in the back garden of Highbara Infirmary. 
Back door key. Nice. Okay, so we got a back door key. Where the hell is that? Examine the incinerator in the garden. Okay, so we have to go back out to the garden. Found a tape. Those are my investigation notes. Tono Tsubaki, female. Circumstances of death. Collapsed while performing the role of the vessel during the Rogets Kagura. Witnesses reported that she was already dead when they rushed to help her. Cause of death. Postmortem failed to reveal any disease or injury. Suspect heart failure, but this diagnosis is inconsistent with the condition of the body. Base could not be identified. Cause unknown. Fortunately, deceased did not blossom. Did the right of descent affect Kagura? Death possibly caused by mask. Report to Master Yomotsuki. Yomotsuki is Ruka's last name. Is Master Yomotsuki her father, who was crafting the masks? He must be, right? Okay, what am I missing here? There's got to be something, like, on the ground, on someone's face. Is it up? No, it's right over there. Huh. Is Stalker Shadow of Chernobyl Horror? I think so. The original Stalker is for sure a horror movie, so... I would, uh... And Roadside Picnic is a sci-fi horror novel, so... What is going on here? What do we need? What do we need? Come on, dude. See, so this is a good example of why I don't think the combat in this game is interesting. The ghost disappears. We stand in a circle. We wait for the little alarm to show back up to tell us where he is. And then we attack him. And all this is doing, this isn't posing a threat to me. I'm able to attack him before he can even respond to me. It's literally just wasting my time. That's all this achieves. Not a meaningful encounter. Exhausting. All right. Let's move forward. There we go. Guess we gotta go in there next. Bad picture, but it's whatever. Gives us the same amount of points either way. What's over here? Oh, that's just the... That was just a scare. That doesn't give me anything. It's just spooky. Ugh, so inconsistent. <laughs> let me take pictures of ghosts. Why wouldn't you let me? They're really throwing healing items at us during a time when we don't really need them. There must be somewhere I can switch on the power. I don't know why I need to have the camera equipped sometimes to take pictures of things, but other times I can't. Uh, ben asks, you said Clock Tower games were not good. What about the SNES versions? Uh, yeah, I don't think that they're good. They're definitely influential, um, but they're just chaser games. They've got great pixel art, and they're exciting, I guess, if you if you like that. But 
Uh, just I don't I don't think that they're interesting. I don't think anything that they do is particularly engaging. They're short. That's probably the best thing about them. Just don't really... I don't think anyone in looking for a particularly good survival horror game will find much in Clock Tower. Uh, and especially not as the series goes on. Can you quit it? Okay, so there are three ghosts in here. now and wait for my flashlight to uh gotta I don't know Bennett says there's a manga I read once where a boy watched his aunt murder his cousin and he had to keep it a secret um I don't think it was his aunt I think it was his mom and if it was a recent manga it's Blood on the Tracks by Sh uh, Oshimi Shuzo Chino Wadachi. It's like an excellent manga. If it's not that, then I have no no idea. I couldn't tell you. I don't read a lot of manga, so I read more manga than I watch anime. But it's it's rare to get me invested. In. Oh come on! First time getting hit. Get these two. Oh, I'm out of ammo. Just gotta run. Horror manga is its own sort of grab bag of interesting things. People tend to fixate on Ito, and I do like, uh, I do like Junji Ito, but there are some other great ones as well. PTSD Radio, Fuan no Tane, Aku no Hana, Trail of Blood, Chino Warachi. Happiness is also good, that's another Shuzo Oshimi. Uh, manga about vampires uh, another manga about vampires is pretty good Hitsuji no Uta Lament of the Lamb it's an old one I think it's out of print now we've accidentally excavated out from the B2 lift shaft into the primeval passage so work has been stopped for the time being in the past we came up against this passage while building the room under the director's office what the hell is he thinking taking some kind of risk twice the same kind of risk twice the ancients of the island forbade the excavation of buildings underground. If the old primeval passage is disturbed, then the moonlight won't reach. Of course, there's also the great old horror masters, stuff like Umez and, uh... Oops. I just want to avoid that real quickly. Shoujo Tsubaki. Stuff like that. Really messed up 60s arrow guru. Uh, with, with Umez, there's also like Drifting Classroom. Drifting Classroom's great. Bloodborne takes a lot from that. Can't believe I
believe I have two ghost fights in the same room. We must persevere. Persevere through the bad, bad ghost game. I honestly think one of the biggest solutions to like the annoying design in this game is just to make ghosts more aggressive. Like make them not be in walls and also make them not disappear. Because <laughs> cause it's not scary when they teleport somewhere because you can see exactly where they are at all times. It's just annoying. No, it doesn't put you... People will be like, oh, it puts you on edge because you're uncomfortable. But it, like, it also just doesn't. <laughs> like, I'm not, I'm not on edge and it's not scary and I'm not uncomfortable. It's just annoying. Truly obnoxious. Paula says, it's also just more boring. Yeah, exactly. This game was not made for streamers in mind. I've been reading uh, Tomihiko Marimi's uh, horror short story anthology Fox Tales recently. That's pretty interesting. I haven't gotten super far into it. I only had like a night to kind of read it. But if you're looking for good Japanese novels that aren't just terrible light novels, that's a good one. Yeah, Blood on the Tracks is, is one of the best recent horror manga. All of Oshimi's work is good. Aku no Hana especially is just superb. And, and um, I believe in English it's called uh, Inside Mary. Boku wa Mari no Naka is extremely good. Like just truly impressive storytelling. Apollo says Saya no Uta. Why do you say Saya no Uta? <laughs> that's that's not Oshimi Shuzo. That's uh that's Urobuchi Gen. More spooky things to add to the list. Yeah, I mean the only the only thing that uh. <laughs> The only thing with Sayano Uta is that it's very it's very hard to recommend because of its subject matter. It has not particularly survived uh, modern sensibilities for many reasons. <laughs> you can say that about a lot of like horror visual novels in general. Higurashi is really good. Umineko is really good. Higambana is very good. Ryukishi stuff in general is great. Raging Loop is really good. That's not Ryukishi. That's just a cool visual novel. The day of the Kagura is close at hand. It's sure to be packed with spectators. There are even some famous people coming from the mainland. Opening the Kagura to the public has not only improved the image of the island, but brought us wealth in so many ways. How has it improved the image of the island? It's literally like child torture. I, it's like openly we make a kid dance for too long and everyone else chants and makes fun of her while she does it like they all represent pain this is not a good thing that would not improve the image of the island however there are also preparations to be made for the other ceremony the organs have been chosen and the true mask of the true lunar eclipse the true mask of the lunar eclipse has been completed the rite of descent will return the Mask of the Lunar Eclipse is feared as the mask that caused the vessel to blossom, bringing the day of tranquility that destroyed the island. But by performing the rite of descent with the true mask, the vessel, my poor suffering daughter, will be cured. The Mask of the Lunar Eclipse is our last chance to cure Moonlight Syndrome. The Mask of the Vessel causes the wearer to lose themselves, but the Mask of the Lunar Eclipse is said to erase all memory, bring the wearer to the place of origin, purify them, and then bring them back to themselves, back to the living. 
the right of descent succeeds if the right of descent succeeds my seemingly never-ending battle with moonlight syndrome will finally come to an end there have been casualties my dear wife blamed herself for our daughter's illness and in her distress ended her own life perhaps she was better off not having to see our daughter end up like this everything i've done my work my sacrifices the culmination of all of my research it's all for her At last, the mask of the lunar eclipse that I have poured my heart and soul into is complete. It is no overstatement to say that I have spent uh, myself completely in this endeavor, but it was worth it. I want to thank you all sincerely for your support. The way to make the mask only became clear to me when you reconstructed the ancient documents on the Lost Rite of Descent. You also solved the mystery of the materials to use and gathered them for me. Probably faces. I mean, speaking realistically, right? Like, it's got to be faces. You use faces to make the face mask. Some real leather face <laughs> nonsense. The right of descent will surely produce the results you desire. And the true mask of the lunar eclipse will take shape. The true mask of the lunar eclipse is not the foul artifact that brought about the terrible day of tranquility spoken of in our legends. No, that disaster was caused because the mask made by an my ancestor Soetsu was less than perfect. Thanks to you, this mask will open the door to the hollowed realm Soetsu wrote of. As I must perform my role as keeper of the masks during the Kagura, I cannot witness the rite of descent with my own eyes, but I will be praying for its success. So that's from R Ruka's dad. And he's kind of a bad cat. Memo Special Treatment Make the arrangements as scheduled for the five patients who are to receive our special treatment. Note that some are outpatients. Use the room underneath the director's office, but ensure that no one knows about the procedure or gains entry. Of the inpatients, Misaki Aso in 310 and Ruka Yomotsuki in 308 have the most potential. Maroka Tsukimori in 203 may also be of use. However, some doubts remain about the outpatients Marie Shinomiya and Tomoe Nanamura. Written note attached to the memo. You can't choose the organs for the right of descent in the same way as you do for the Rogetsu Kagura. This isn't a harvest dance in the damn village square. They used to be very careful in choosing the organs of the right of descent. Only the Vestal, Obedient, and Impressionable would do. <coughs> Oops. Girls who can easily be made one with the masks and music. The right of descent is very serious. <laughs> it's very serious business. Serious business. Serious business dance. Uh, its performance and outcome affect the fate of our entire community. You can't afford to make any mistakes. The candidates must be perfect, even if they give you some pause. Here's, here's some pause. Here's some pause for you. Is that enough? You get enough pause? Alright, so we just have to go to the back door of this facility. Oh. Sure, we'll pick up the ghost phone. that we're only targeting the girls. Okay, bye lady. Die already so I can leave the room. Alright, so where the heck are we supposed to go? I don't... I don't remember. I think we're supposed to go back towards where 
we were playing as Misaki. I don't remember. There we go. Uh, yeah, as, uh, when we were playing as uh, Duka and Misaki, I think that's the area we need to go. Back, it said go to the back door, I think. Over here, okay. I see. So after we play uh, the Sherlock remake, I think we're going to need to play some retro games. I mean, obviously, I'm going to do uh, Jedi Survivor when that launches. But after Survivor, because I expect that will only take me a few days to get through, um, unless it's like drastically larger than Fallen Order. Um, maybe we'll play something retro on the channel. Like real retro, I mean. Something four or three. We need to get back to doing some furry games as well. I want to play... Uh, I have some of the Sam and Max games sitting on my hard drive waiting to be played. So we might, we might go through and do that. So much stuff to fit in. Just not a lot of time. <laughs> Apollos is tribal hunter. Nah, probably probably not tribal hunter right now. I have to wait until I'm bigger to cash in on that that one. I need to, I need to make sure that we hit max saturation with possible people I can traumatize with tribal hunter. I have been wanting to go through a bunch of the Sonic games just to do them. Could be fun to do that as a series. Speaking of which, I just bought Diablo 2 Resurrected, uh, the PC version on the on the Battle.net Spring Sale. So maybe, maybe we'll play that sometime. It'd be fun to go through Diablo 1 and 2 at least. Because at least those first two games have an incredible atmosphere and great music. This must be where they burned the erroneous documents. What could they have been? <laughs> A rusted furnace filled with trash bags. I know, buddy. Thanks. Pick up the item. There we go. Film incineration. I've decided that the film of the Kagura has to be incinerated. While I'm aware of the importance of keeping a record of the event, even considering what happened, there's something very strange about this film. At first, I thought it was just damage to the film itself, but I checked again, and that's what I realized. The film is showing a woman who definitely wasn't present at the time of the recording. I think she's dancing. Just to be sure, I had the other nurses watch the film with me. The second time I saw it, I could see her even more clearly. The woman is slowly becoming more and more apparent in the film. I could barely believe it myself when I came to this realization, but that's, there's simply no other explanation. I don't want to see it again. I don't even want to be near this damned film anymore. I'm afraid I can't wait for your permission, director. I'm taking this cursed thing straight to the rear incinerator and destroying it once for all. Okay. Well, that's good, I guess. It's probably a good thing you, you destroyed the, the exorcism murder film. You know... That's one of the things with the ring, right? Actually, it's not. What I'm about to say does not does not make any sense in the context of the canon of of Suzuki Koji's uh, ring novels because of Loop. But uh, if the ring were real, sorry, bud, just let let one of them die. Don't keep making copies. Let one of the people die and then burn the film. Sorry, take one for the team. That's all I'm saying. 
That's like pandemic control, epidemic control 101. Study the effects, learn the effects, quarantine. <laughs> Ring is a Ring's a fun series. I would love to play the absolutely terrible video game adaptation that uh, came out on Dreamcast, I believe. All right, we lifted the doll's curse. Good for us. Still don't really know what doing that does. Is there anything cool for me to pick up? Because I would like the item that is fla seemingly flashing on my screen. That'd be really cool. I'm going to shine my flashlight all over and hope that it hits the specific pixel that they want me to hit. There we go. Ooh, bl 20 blue spirit stones. That's not bad. we got to give those to Misaki, though. She's kind of lagging behind, I think. Where do I go next? Is that it? Yeah, I guess it is. I guess we just turn back around. Hmm. So they burned a film. That's enlightening. I think we already knew that. Oh, chain lens. Change equipment. Increases the time to, to make a chain. Cool. Max power, depth, lunar power. That could actually be nice. Storage, chain. I don't need power, I need damage <laughs> very different things power stored and, and damage are, are very very different all right i guess we're just going to go back now we just i haven't really learned what we want to do next examine the incinerator in the garden i already examined it this is going to be an annoying sequence where i have to like really <laughs> pixel hunt to figure out the exact spot it wants me to all right there's something like right here but it's just not loving how I'm trying to reveal it. Is it up in the tree? It is. Ten blue spirit stones. All right, we're pretty close there. Depth would be good. Uh, increased points, increased massive amount of stored points, improved spirit stone flashlight charging time. That could be actually really good. That's a big deal for him. All right, so we're going to run back over here to the incinerator, see what we can do. Okay, th th yeah, I can actually pick this up now. Bundle of burned letters. A tightly bound bundle of letters lies at the bottom of the furnace. These letters are addressed to me? Dear Choshiro, long time no see. I hear you're coming to Rogetsu Isle for work. I'm on the island now, conducting some research. We'll be able to meet up. This place is pretty interesting. Its culture is almost completely unique. Oh my god, there's 27 pages of this. My specific research topic is masks. The mask-related beliefs of Rogat's Isle are well known even on the mainland, but there are still many mysteries to be explained. Fortunately for me, this is the year of the Rogat's Kagura, held once a decade. Many different masks are made for the ceremony. I couldn't have timed it better. If all goes well, 
and my honestly famous last words. If all goes well, I might even have a chance to actually see the masks being made. I'm planning to stay up for a while to take advantage of all these great research opportunities. Do you remember my younger sister, Yori? She insisted on tagging along with me. She says she's really excited about seeing the Rogetsu Kagura. What a tourist. When I told her I knew a real detective, Yori said she wanted to meet you. So when you get here, we should all go out for a drink. We haven't done that much since we got jobs. Takashi Aiba, teaching assistant, history department, Kusanagi University. Purpose of most Kagura masks is to make the wearers one with the gods as they may take the appearance of them and perform the ritual dance. But the masks on Rogat's Isle don't represent gods. In fact, there aren't any gods in the belief system here. Also, the Rogat's Kagura got its current name relatively recently. It used to be called the Rite of Descent. Descent represents the journey of the souls of the dead. And given the custom of putting masks on the faces of corpses, the masks on this island must represent the dead. The tradition of putting on death masks and performing dances occurs elsewhere, but these masks represent death itself, the forms of minds that have faced death, the shape of the soul at the moment one moves from existence to nothingness. The masks here represent the shapes of things that leave behind no lasting forms. See, that's kind of weird because ghosts leave literally lasting forms. I mean, they're, they're literally people. So, like... <laughs> It's a little sus. I mean, like, maybe rethink your entire belief system if that's what you believe. The Rite of Descent used such masks. What function did it have in island society? Is the mask worn by the vessel? It was crafted long before the other Kagura masks, and its roots are different from any of them. The most prominent of them all is the Mask of the Lunar Eclipse crafted by the artisan Soetsu Yumotsuki. However, the legend has it that disaster befell the island when the mask of the lunar eclipse caused the vessel to blossom, and so its existence has remained taboo for many years. The mask-making arts from that era of Soetsu were lost for a time, most likely as a result of the disaster. Nothing is known about it except that it was black in color. The present-day mask-maker Soya wants to revive the advanced arts of Soetsu. Perhaps the mask of the lunar eclipse is ultimately... Said we both have mild cases of Moonlight Syndrome. They say it happens to a lot of people after watching the Kagura. We'll have to be hospitalized here for a while. Now that I write the word hospitalized, it makes it sound so serious. But don't worry, it's not that big a deal. In fact, it won't even stop me from continuing my mask research. If you get another chance to visit the island, make sure you visit us. We could certainly use some companionship here. The other patients aren't exactly... a black mask... When the dead return to the world of the living, the living become as the dead. The mask made to become as the dead makes the wearer become death itself. I can't imagine what this mask is used for. It has a gentle smile like a Buddhist statue, but there's a primal emptiness about its face that is evocative of death. A particular kind of death. Looking at it, I feel myself drawn into the depths of oblivion. I feel terror and relief. It's beautiful. The Mask of the Lunar Eclipse Though I smashed my eyes in, I still see. It's still looking at me. I can see it again. It's so beautiful.